Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please give us a call if you guys are looking to improve your credit score, lower your car payment, buy a car, trade in a car. Uh, if you're looking to purchase your first home, if you're looking to purchase a rental property, we can help you. Give us a call today, 877-205-7771. Talk to you guys soon and thanks again. Hello everyone, this is Calvin Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're gonna talk about uh, one of the biggest things that are now changing the banking industry and why banks hate, simply hate, how the uh, how these are affecting lending decisions. And that's if you're using heavily Cash App, Quick Pay, Zenmo, is it Zenmo, Venmo, Zelle, or PayPal, okay? Let's talk about it. So, a couple things. Um, PayPal's been out for years, since the eBay days. They have completely become a separate company. Um, for those who don't know, random fact, uh, uh, Elon Musk, uh, who of course is the owner of, uh, what's the car company called, uh, Tesla. Uh, he used to work, I think he cre helped create PayPal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but either way, that's how, go that's how long ago PayPal goes. Uh, but either way, those are one of the first platforms where you can actually, you know, submit, you know, send money back and forth to friends and family. But then, of course, businesses start picking up on it, you know, if um, like on Craigslist and things of that sort. But either way, that's been out for years. When that was just the case, uh, not to my knowledge, a lot of people wasn't necessarily using it just a sole way of earning, uh, well, to collect money, especially as a side hustle or some type of business. Now, today, everybody swaps money out back and forth. But the problem is, is that you have some people who are making, you know, like, you know, anywhere between 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000, four thousand dollars a month using these types of platforms to you know uh to actually move money around uh which of course that creates a lot of questions uh so if you're let's say you're a small business owner and for whatever reason you got a lot of people paying you through cash app or whatever well we see that happen through catering businesses um, you know, hairdressers, nail technicians, you name it, right? Even if you're tipping, you know, somebody at the local hair salon or barbershop or whatever, you know, people use Cash App or whatever platform they have. Now, don't get me wrong. Most name brand places, they're going to have a traditional car swipe, you know, but at the same time, let's be honest, if you don't have your car and you got everything kind of attached, you just pull out your phone, you kind of just do everything, it's way quicker. Um, I actually started collecting my rent doing that uh, because I, of course, it saves me time, you know, so um, if you zail it or whatever, but again, let's talk about rent for a second. If I'm collecting anywhere between $500 to $1,000 every single month, that obviously plays a role in my income. So what does that mean when, as far as why banks hate it? Well, because they don't know why a person sent money. <laughs> Let's be honest. If you go out to eat with your friends, the bill comes out to 150, right? And then of course everybody pays their share, you know, then everybody's paying you all this money. And if you start doing it often, it's gonna look like you have income coming in when essentially it's not income. You're just always buying everybody's stuff and then everybody's paying you through Zelle, Chase Quick Pay, check Cash App, whatever you're using, right? So the problem is is that when you're trying to get an auto loan and you're using that as proof of income, that's where it gets a little tricky, okay? So now keep in mind, when you're buying a car and your score is under 640, under 620, they're gonna need proof of income more than likely. If your score is over 620, over 640, sometimes they don't ask for proof of income because the score is a little bit higher and the bank is willing to take that risk because they know a car, they know eventually you're gonna go to work. So either gonna go home or you're gonna go to work. So we'll find out what a car is at some point, okay? <laughs> and yes, I've seen people get their car repossessed while they're at the job. Okay, like literally, I was there at the job. And I was like, man, they taking this, they snatching this car. So either way, uh, what my car? But my car did get repossessed back in 09. I told you guys that story, okay? So the next thing is, um, if you're, so we talked about going buying a car. If you're buying a home, it gets extremely difficult because you have what they call underwriters, okay? Underwriters, their job is to make sure that there's no money laundering, there's no fraud, looking for mistakes. But a lot of times, they're just people that just make things just difficult. <laughs> but either way, um, I get where they're coming from though, because there's no uh, no way to kind of source that money. For example, um, I have a client of mine who's closing uh, on a house right now, actually. Uh, she's a hairdresser. A lot of money is coming in through Cash App and all these other platforms, right? And this is how she makes her money. Now, don't get me wrong, because she get a car swiper and stuff like that, but car swipers are getting kind of phased out, let's be honest. You know, so now you got all these easy platforms where it's like, hey, you know what? Let me just send you 
you this money. Hey, you know what? Let me send you this money. That kind of deal, you know. But then now, if you're living off of this income, now you're making anywhere between two to eight, whatever the number is, thousand dollars a month, right? And now, you know, you're trying to buy a house. It gets very difficult because there's no way to kind of source that. A person can say that money's for something, you know, but at the same time, they won't know if it's legitimate income or if someone's just giving you money that you, you know, that they owe you or something like that. That's two different things. It's not income. That's just somebody that owe you money or someone is paying you to go do something or whatever. Okay. Or someone's giving, sending you money to go hold it or something like that. So there's a lot of confusion with it. And because of that, banks cannot source it. There's no paper trail. Now, can you add a description when you're sending people money and stuff like that? You can but the bank statements have to suffice for it. But let's be honest, that's not the only reason why we use, you know, Cash App. When I first got it, it was for, not just for business, but it was like for referral fees or, you know, uh, like my barber, you no, know, actually my son got his hair cut today. So, you know, I paid him you know, through that you know, through that platform. But that's not the only platform my barber takes. So you guys are getting this. It just makes things a lot more difficult for banks. I'm not saying stop what you're doing. I'm just saying, just, just setting the expectations, you know, this won't, don't act like you said, man, nobody ever told me this. No, the guy on YouTube told you that was me. <laughs> so either way, um, if anything changes as the industry starts to change, they're going to get more used to it. Just like a lot of people are doing, um, you know, Lyft and Uber, you know, um, and they're with these driving services, right? And so because of that, a lot more people are getting more 1099 income. So with that, um, you know, Uber and Lyft, they're going to sort, they're going to send their half of the taxes as an expense because they paid you, right, for a service. And then, of course, you have to turn in your half and then, you know, show, show, show that that's actual income. The problem is with Cash App and all the rest of that, there's no tax documents. There's no someone said that you paid X, Y, Z. That's just money being received, you know. So it just makes a lot more things difficult, a lot more cloudier, uh, you know. Is that even the word cloudier? Either way. So, <laughs> you know, for the, uh, the home buying process and sometimes with the car buying process, process depending on your credit score okay if you got any questions comments or concerns you can always just shoot us an email if you like this video like it you want to share it share it and as always be sure to subscribe and have nothing but great content on the way thank you guys so much have a great day